Let's go. All right. Hello. Hi, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to those joining us online. Um, I'm Frank Lance. I'm the director of the NYU Game Center. I'm joined today by Bennett Foddy, one of my colleagues here uh, as an instructor at the, the Game Center. And uh, we're going to talk about the MFA program and do a little info session. So we're going to lay out how the program works, what it's all about, some of the details, and then leave uh, a certain amount of time for discussion, because this is really a chance to answer any questions that you might have and have a conversation um, about what we do here. Uh, and I apologize it's a little noisy, but we're right in the middle of Playtest Thursday, which is uh, one of the institutions that we have. And it's uh, growing, and it's a very um, enthusiastic crowd here playing games and playtesting each other's uh, games. So it's going to be a little noisy, but we'll try to um, communicate uh, so, first of all, just a little bit of history uh, about the program. The Game Center has been around for uh, five or six years now. Uh, I guess seven years now, really, according to this slide. And um, when we originally started, we were a resource for NYU students who were interested in games as a field of study, a potential career. We started offering undergrad classes. Uh, we created a minor in game design. And then we uh, created a, a graduate program two years ago. So now we have this, this MFA, which is a two-year grad program, uh, which has just, uh, this past year, graduated its first MFA students out into the world. We are in the middle of starting a BFA program, which will begin uh, in the spring with internal transfers, and then in the fall open its doors to incoming students. And we are located in the Tisch School of the Arts, which is the department that also has acting and filmmaking and writing for film and, and a lot of the kind of performance and, and lively arts uh, departments. And the big idea at the heart of the NYU Game Center and the MFA program is that games matter, that games are important, and that they are important for their own sake, not just as a form of technology, not just as one type of digital media in this crazy new world of interactive media, um, not just as an industry, uh, but in and of themselves as a form of culture. And that's the way that we think about games and that's the way that we study them, as an important form of culture and, and studying game design itself as a creative practice. So we. Uh, very much have an art school or a film school approach. We look at games as an aesthetic form that's something like music or film or literature. And, and when, when I say we have an art school or a film school approach, what I'm really talking about is that there's a lot of making games. You're, you're learning by doing, you're learning by creating. There's a lot of hands-on creation. But it's done within a context of advanced critical literacy. So we're not just teaching the craft uh, or the skill of, of creating games, we're also doing it in a way that leads to a kind of mindful consideration of why you're making games, what kinds of games you want to make, and, and how those games fit into the world. So yeah, the studio approach is really at the heart of what we do. Um, you're constantly making games by yourself or in small groups. Uh, and we have a, a sp the spine of the program is our uh, studio, uh, the core classes that are in our studio track. Um, in these classes, you are mastering the craft of, of, of doing, uh, of, of creating games, uh, both digital and non-digital. And, but in addition to, to mastering that craft, you're also thinking about your own personal vision for who you are as a creator. Um, so in the same way that in the film school, you're learning all of the technical stuff about how a film gets made and you're learning all those different pieces. You're also, everyone who goes through NYU Film School learns what it means to be a director in the sense of the person responsible for the overall creative vision of, of a project. And we do the same thing here, so that everyone here is learning all the sort of interdisciplinary aspects of game development, but they're also learning what it means to be the person in charge of the creative vision for the game and thinking about every detail how it fits together into a successful game. Uh, so we have sort of two different ways that we think of game design as a term. Um, in one sense, 
game design is a very specific discipline alongside the other disciplines that come together when you're making a video game. So, um, you know, alongside programming, alongside visual design, alongside audio design and storytelling, there's game design in the sense of concept development, system design, player experience, interaction design, balancing, you know, economies and thinking about all those aspects of, of, the, of the side of the, this kind of emerging new design discipline called game design. But we also think of game design as the overall practice of just mindful game development. When you're doing game development that is driven by a vision for how you want the game to work, that is original, that is doing something innovative and interesting, then every aspect of development is desi has design in it. And, it. and that's an important quality. So we, we have what we call a, a kind of a flat approach um, where you might be, you're doing a lot of collaboration. You might be responsible primarily for one aspect of a project that has two or three other people on it. Maybe you're primarily in charge of the code or primarily in charge of the graphics, the visual design, or primarily in charge of the game design in the sense of balance and, and system design. But really, everybody on that team is responsible for the overall design. We think of all of those things as being aspects of game design in the sense that all of the little micro decisions you're making contribute to the overall vision of the game, or what, what type of game it is, how it expresses an idea. Um, I mean, we think, uh, think a lot about how uh, John Romero and John Carmack used to argue back in the id days, because John Romero was always like, oh, design, that's the most important thing. And John Carmack, the programming genius you know, at id, often used to say, well, there's a lot of design in what I do, even though he's this rocket scientist type guy who's like making you know, this engine as efficient as possible. All of these little micro decisions you make, no matter what part of the game you're working on, add up and they contribute to the overall feel of the game, to the spirit of the game, to the vision of the game. It's all important and it's all designed. So in that sense, we, we don't isolate people into different silos. We don't think about these things as separate disciplines. We respect the fact that it's, you know, that, that a lot of different kinds of sub, you know, skills come together in a game, but we think of everything as being about how, how does it all come together and everyone on the team is responsible for that larger question of how it's all coming together. Um, we are, we like to think of ourselves as kind of platform agnostic uh, in the sense that we recognize that, listen, we exist as a department because of video games. Um, the, you know, video games are completely and utterly revolutionary and unique. They're transforming our understanding of what games are. They are the most interesting and exciting form of pop culture that's happening in the world right now. Um, and, but, but we like to see video games within the larger context of games and play as a form of culture that is ancient and has always been important. Um, so we think about, uh, you know, th we think that the best way to understand digital games and video games is to also understand board games and sports and game shows on television and gambling and everything that is involved in play and games as a form of culture that goes all the way back to, to prehistory. Um, and um, we also, you know, we, we think that the, the, the important things about game design kind of transcend any one particular platform because regardless of what kind of game you're making, you're thinking about systems and logic and rules and you're thinking about the player experience in terms of the decisions and the actions that the player is doing and, and the emotional and psychological effects that are created by those systems and actions. Uh, and so um, that's kind of our approach and we, we teach uh, the sort of principles of game design in you know, using classes uh, that are um, sort of off the computer and that allow students to build paper games, tabletop games, board games, social games, face-to-face -face games, physical games. They understand the basic principles. How do you design a compelling interactive system? 
uh, how do you design a series of actions and choices that explores an uh, interesting idea that expresses something cool that takes the player to a really interesting place emotionally and psychologically. Um, that's, that's the key. And we, sometimes we describe this as uh, games with computers in them instead of the other way around. Instead of just thinking about games as a subset of computer software, we think of computers as one powerful way to make games among many. Uh, one of the big aspects of our identity is the fact that we're in New York City. Um, we, over the past few years, have been, I think, one of the ingredients of a, a real flourishing of the New York uh, game development scene. New York has always been kind of on the margins of the game industry, but over the past few years, it started to become much more thriving uh, as a place to make games for a number of different reasons. And, um, and part of that is we host a lot of events that are open to the public. Uh, we have a great uh, lecture series. Um, tonight, in fact, uh, Yoichi Wada, the former president and CEO of Square Enix, is going to be coming to speak here, right here, in about an hour. Um, and uh, we've had uh, other just amazing people, uh, Eric Wolpaw coming to c talk about Portal 2, and people like Jonathan Blow, and scholars like Ian Bogost, and um, just it, it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a great um, series that that always attracts a lot of, a mix of students from NYU, students from other places, local indie game developers, journalists, and people related to the game scene. Uh, the No Quarter exhibit is a yearly exhibit where we commission games from indie game designers. It's always big and fun and high profile. We have game tournaments, uh, Spring Fighter, which is a, becoming a kind of an important annual Street Fighter tournament, uh, Fall Craft, which is our StarCraft tournament. Um, we have uh, a year, an annual game design conference called Practice, which is a, um, a really great sort of high-level conference for professional game designers. Uh, we often have master classes and workshops that are open to the public. And uh, as a result, we are really well connected with a lot of uh, game development and game, game design activity. And, um, and we have a a lot of cool people that come and teach classes here with Chris Plant, the former, uh, used to write at uh, Polygon, now at The Verge, uh, is teaching a class in game journalism, writing about games. Uh, Rob Dabio, who's a, a, the board game designer who created the Risk Legacy series, uh, is teaching uh, game design here. We have a lot of um, great, interesting uh, designers and, and people from the scene that are a big part of the, the community. So, th and that's a, and being in New York is a large, part of our identity and, and who we are um, kind of affects a lot of the, the sort of spirit of our approach to, to teaching um, that we, I think, attract students who are interested in um, not just getting a job in the game industry, but being leaders in the game industry who want to innovate and do things that are different and experiment and take creative risks and the kind of people that are attracted to New York City in general, right? They want to work on the edge of what's happening and what's possible and work with the best people and be part of the smartest and most interesting conversation that's happening. So that's the kind of students that, that we attract and the kind of scene that we're trying to build. Um, all right, so that's a general over. What did I leave out, Bennett? Anything? Anything from your perspective? No, I would just back up uh, some of the things that you were saying. I mean, I think what, one of the things that makes um, the Game Center stand out versus uh, other programs in, uh, in game design around the country and around the world is kind of the emphasis on, number one, on, on the kind of um, the creative side uh, and the sort of less of an emphasis on the industrial side. Uh, but I think kind of philosophically we've got this stance that if you are able to make great games on your own or in a, in a group of two or three, you're going to be a better collaborator in a, in a bigger group. If you do wind up going out into the industry and yeah. working for a kind of enormous studio or, you know, or, or by yourself, or, you know, the reality of, of uh, making games in 2014 is, you know, there's been a huge uh, kind of epoch shift in, in how people get jobs in the industry. And, and you now can make a real living by yourself in a small studio or in a colossal studio, and they're all kind of on even, even footing now, I think. Yeah. And I think, uh, you know, 
our philosophy is to try to make you the kind of best collaborator and also the best sort of self-sufficient creator that, that we can. Yeah. Uh, and so that that's the kind of uh, ethos that kind of echoes throughout the program, I think. Yeah. You, you have the world's greatest uh, forehead tattoo right now. Oh. It's like an awesome Game Center <laughs> logo yeah. right on your head. You look like a Star Trek character. It's pretty cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's true. I mean, we... One of the things I should mention is, is how we integrate uh, programming into uh, game design. Um, we, so a lot of programs, that are, a lot of schools that are out there, game design is seen almost as a subset of software engineering, and that's not our approach. We don't see, we don't think that, we think games are primarily a creative discipline, not a technical discipline that happens to have some creativity in it. However, we also think that if you want to be a programmer, I mean, if you want to be a game designer, rather, you should know how to code. That doesn't mean that you should become a programmer. Some people yep. are programmers and some people are not. Yep. But every game designer should be familiar with the basics of code. They should be self-sufficient to, to write small programs that work. Yep. They should feel comfortable around code. They should feel comfortable talking to programmers, scanning code, and, and they should be literate in it. And again, it's not that we're forcing people to become programmers, but we, everyone who goes to school here learns the basics. And, uh, and, and learns the, the fundamental literacy of, of writing working software. I mean, I think we believe that the best game developers are kind of like, uh, it's the, the model of uh, being a director from film. And being yep. a good director means being able to come in to anyone's shoes, whether it's the audio person or the code person or, or the art person, and be able to con contribute meaningfully. Yep. Uh, not be the expert coder, not be the expert uh, you know, uh, graphics programmer or whatever it may be. Uh, or the expert artist, but, but to be able to say something meaningful to those people and to speak to them in a way that's simultaneously uh, creatively meaningful and uh, you know, technically literate, and that's yeah. what I want everybody to be able to do. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's a good combination because from, from what I see, um, that particular combination, our emphasis on creativity and vision and originality and innovative design thinking combined with the ability that like technical chops to, to do things on your own and to be comfortable around code, that's a killer combination. That's something that the industry needs and wants. And, uh, and so it's uh, whether you're working on your own or you're going out to get a job uh, at uh, Ubisoft or something, I think it's a, it's a good combination. Um, all right, so let's open it up to questions. We have, uh, we have some people here in, uh, in, in the space with us, and then we have people online. So um, we'll start here. Do, are any questions or things that we can answer for you? Sure. I mean, at the graduate level, we get people from all uh, fields. Uh, we've got people coming in with, uh, you know, 3D art skills, with 2D art skills, code, like history of being, you know, professional coders. We've got people coming in from writing and journalism and uh, from theater as well. And we've got people coming in with no particular uh, skills oriented to games. I mean, what we're interested in is giving people a kind of platform to take the creative outlook and the skills that they do have and kind of weave that into a creative practice around games. So it, it really, we really do get a kind of wide range of people. In our, yeah, our goal is to build a diverse community of people from different backgrounds, with different points of view, and different skill sets. Uh, because games are so interdisciplinary and because games um, like allow for, for collaboration and, uh, and also because we're, we don't want to just kind of reproduce the existing kind of conventions of, of game design as if it were an un, like a well understood uh, practice, we want people to be exploring what's possible, that this is an emerging and growing and evolving field. So yeah, we, we like to have a mix of people, some of whom are super steeped in games and have made games and have grown up playing games their whole lives, and others who are passionate about entering into the world of games, but maybe aren't like already super experts, but they're bringing a background from architecture or activism and community management or, you know, from storytelling and, and visual design. So, um, and we put those people together. We want to 
you know, it's kind of like alchemy to, to build a community um, in which that encourages collaboration and cross-pollination and, uh, and, and allows for that to stuff to bubble up. So just to give you an example, this is how we structure the, um, the digital games production class. So I, I teach the first uh, class, the first studio class, where we have people coming in with a huge range of different skills. And some people know how to code, some people have never made a game before, never touched anything to do with that. Everybody makes uh, two digital games of their own um, as, as the kind of very first thing you do in digital games at the game center. And then you gradually start to uh, collaborate by the very end of that class. Uh, then the second half of the year in the spring, you're put into a situation where you have to form larger groups and then you have to contend with the team dynamics and, and collaboration and task management and all of those other things that go into kind of working in a studio. But by that stage, everybody's got some skills, right? Everybody's got something that they can contribute to a project. You know, we start, people start streaming themselves a little bit, I guess, into specialties and, and kind of core, er, core, uh, core areas of uh, competency. And that, um, you know, by the time that you're through that, uh, in your second year, you go into working on a thesis project, which is a big, uh, like, large-scale uh, digital or non-digital game, which can go on to become the thing that you represent yourself with when you go out into the world seeking jobs. Um, and, and by that stage, you're kind of a skilled collaborator, you're a skilled solo practitioner, and, uh, you know, kind of set up to do all of those things. So the idea is to get everybody up to speed relatively quickly, and then to be able to take... Uh, you know, their, their kind of unique creative talents and kind of take it to the next level in, in you know, collaboration with one another. Okay, internet question. Ah, yes, so um, great, great question uh, about uh, game, uh, sort of ac academics, game scholarship, and how do we integrate that into the program? So. When I talk about the art school approach of hands-on practice within advanced critical literacy, the advanced critical literacy part is the uh, is sort of the game studies component of, of our program. So we have a series of classes that are about history, critical literacy, uh, thinking about um, what uh, games, different frameworks for analyzing games, uh, developing a, a critical vocabulary for talking and analyzing uh, about games and uh, understanding the, the sort of larger theoretical and analytical uh, sort of and cultural ways of, of, of understanding games. Um, so these are classes in which <clears throat> they're typically sort of a seminar style class. There's lots of reading uh, both of historical, important historical uh, studies and of contemporary stuff. Um, there's discussion, there's writing papers, um, and, um, you know, for one example uh, of, a, of a class like that is uh, Games 101, which everyone takes as sort of a cornerstone class uh, for the program. Games 101 is basically like an art history class for the whole field of, of games as a form of culture, going all the way back to, to the dawn of time um, and the oldest games that we know, but then focusing a lot on the past 50 years on digital games, computer games, and video games. It's a class in which, uh, you know, you're not just being exposed, you know, through slides and lecture to what we think of as being sort of the key ideas and the key works in the history of games, but you're also playing them. So the lab in that class is getting together and playing chess and playing Go and playing Final Fantasy and, and playing, uh, you know, Gears of War and playing, you know, video games, but in a way that um, is designed to help you kind of reflect on that, on, on, what it, on what those games are about, you know, what their main ideas are, how they're put together, who made them and why, uh, reflect on your own experience as a player, but put it in the, into the context of how the games work as designed culture. So, um, yeah, so that's... I mean, I think this goes towards our general philosophy, which also comes into the studio classes, which is to say, you know, we don't want people coming out of the program being just a programmer. I mean, you can do that elsewhere. We don't want people coming out just being an artist. Uh, we, want, we want people coming out with a kind of awareness of the cultural history of games and the cultural context 
the theories that have been written about them. We also want people who have kind of more of a focus on scholarship to come out with an ability to understand and read code and to kind of produce the assets that go into a video game and to do the design uh, behind a video game. Yeah, I think we have a kind of a shared understanding of what it means to be uh, uh, effective and successful artist, which involves being a public intellectual, being a uh, you know a, a well read and well-rounded designer or coder or, or uh, artist, whatever it may be, uh, we, want, we want people to have that kind of broad back. That's, I think that's yeah. what kind of sets the program apart from other ones. And most, most of our students are interested in becoming a professional game designer, game developer, but some of them are interested in, in scholarship, yep. in be going on to, to work further in, in academia, going to get a PhD or going on to teach. Um, going on to write uh, critically about games, being, becoming a game critic or, or journalist or something like that. And, and we definitely support that. And you, we feel like that's, that's a great use of, of the program. But they're going to learn how to do that also by making games. Because we think that that's a, a great way to, to become a, a, a really good um, academic or researcher, or scholar or critic, is to also understand how the process of game design works from the inside. Uh, any other questions here? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, look, we, uh, we, we all, uh, all the faculty members go to GDC and Indicade, uh, more or less, so it's, it's uh, something we, we have a presence at. Usually we have a, um, an NYU booth uh, at those events, uh, and we help, we give uh, assistance to students to, to come out uh, if they do a little bit of work to help us uh, with our uh, promotion of the, mm -hmm. the center there. We've got financial support to take people out and kind of house them, especially at GDC, uh, to kind of upskill and network and do all, all of those sorts of things there. So yeah, I mean, that's an absolutely core thing. I mean, it wouldn't be, uh, I mean, it, it, it's naturally one of the most important things an academic department can do for you is to support, like, helping to bring you into the, the professional and creative world that the medium exists in. I think that's something we actually do a reasonably good job of. Yeah, I mean, one of the goals for us is to have our students, not just learning how to make games, but by their second year, they're working on projects some of which have the capacity to go out into the world and have an impact. And, and so, uh, so our students are often entering their work into festivals like Indiecade. Yeah. The past couple of years since we have the MFA program, we've had a very strong presence uh, at Indiecade. Lots of nominees, uh, uh, not this year, but last year, Slashdash, uh, which is, uh, won the Audience Award right. at Indiecade. We had five finalists. We had Indiecade five this finalists, this year, right? This year, and yeah. and um, so... Yeah, you know, we just think that that um, this this program should be uh, a context for actually doing work that is going out into the world to these yep. things like these festivals, and so that's uh, something we support. Yeah, another internet question. Yeah, two kind of blended into one. Both, both people had strong uh, visual arts backgrounds. They're interested in in the program, but don't have coding backgrounds. So I'm wondering, if they need to be coders before they come to the program. You know, what is it like when they integrate their arts background in the program? No, you definitely don't need to, to be a coder before you get here. We love visual artists and we need them yep. and we're always looking to recruit talented visual uh, designers and artists. Um, and we will, you know, we have the resources to help you, to bring you into to, to the basics of code literacy that we want in our students. Yeah, so let me speak to that. So, I mean, yeah, if you come into the program as a visual artist and you go into the uh, digital game studio class, you have to make a game by yourself, which means, yes, you need to write some code. And I know that's kind of uh, scary for people who have a visual arts background, of, of oftentimes not very much uh, math, not very much science. Uh, but we have an enormous amount of, uh, of support to get you there. You have... Uh, First of all, your studio class is structured in such a way there's no kind of penalty for being, uh, for, for, for being a beginner in code, for, being, uh, for taking first steps in code. So it's structured that way. We have TAs and code tutors, and you know, we have all of this different kind of, we have these Skillshare sessions. There is just an enormous amount of support. Now, we don't expect people to come into the program with no code history and all of them to kind of get the bug and become coders. That's not what the point of that is. The point is, You'll be a better visual artist for games if you are code literate and if you're able to talk to your programmer and to your designer and be able to kind of have a real meeting of the minds. 
one of the things that I'm always reiterating for my students in studio class is, you know, every decision you make as an artist when you're designing sprites or backdrops or if you're laying out kind of text, every decision you make is a game design decision. Every decision you make influences how the code works and how the mechanics work, how the player is engaged in the game, how they experience the game, what kind of emotions that they feel. And you know, I really try to get people to take a holistic view of what game design is. For me, des you know, designing games involves what you're doing visually, what you're doing with sound, uh, what you're doing with the mechanics design, sure, and the rules, that's of course part of game design, and also how you're structuring the code. All of those things are game design. And I think if you're the person who's in charge of the art for a game, you're actually doing game design uh, from beginning to end. And I, I think we have a, a process that reflects that. Yeah, another question? So uh, yeah, so a question about what we're looking for in the portfolio and 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 how to and a logistical question about how to upload an actual game. Yeah. So so first of all, what we're looking for is mostly we're looking for people who are talented who s seem to either have like a lot of potential or who actually have some experience uh, making making games or making things that are relevant and related to games, uh, visual design, art, uh, programming, right. and, um, and, and the like. We're, we're also, we're looking for passion. We're looking for students that are clearly passionate about games, who have a vision for where they want to go uh, in their lives as a game designer, have a sense of, of a direction for what they're interested in, uh, in terms of, 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 a, of a possible career ideas about the kinds of games they want to make and, and a, an ability to express that uh, passion through, through communi communicating it to us and, and, and making it clear. Um, and in terms of the, the work in the portfolio, um, it, it doesn't have to be a completed game. If you've made a completed game, a uh, playable game, that's great. That's going to really give you a leg up and it's something that is, is, uh, has a big impact. Like it, it shows that you have ideas and Moreover, it shows that you're able to execute on those ideas and, and complete a project, and that's a really valuable skill that we look for. In terms of the logistics of uploading the game, if you can uh, I include a link to the actual game itself uh, so that we can play it, that's the best thing. Um, if that's not possible for some reason, yeah, some kind of good media that documents the game, a video yep. um, would be sufficient, and so we don't have like strict criteria about what, what we're looking for. We just, yeah, if we can play the game itself, uh, include a link to the actual game. We, so we've, we've taken students with, who have never made a game, who have, who have a really great uh, art portfolio on their website, who have some great music that they've written, who have some really nice uh, critical writing about games. It's just writing. Uh, but yeah, I mean, it's, it makes it easy for us if you have a game that you've worked on that we can play or that we can look at on YouTube. Uh, or, you know, in the case of uh, some people have made, you know, social or big games, if there was like a documentation and photographs and kind of rule sets, that kind of thing. It's just about giving us a flavor of who you are as a creative person. It doesn't have to be games, it could be uh, related, uh, however tangentially field. What we're looking for is creative passion and interest in games. Yeah, we've had uh, students who've uploaded great portfolios of beautiful photography, yep. uh, costume design, um, you know, uh, carpentry and, and like uh, sculpture style uh, work. Um, it's it's all relevant if it shows your your talent and, and your skill and your passion. Yeah. Um, first of all, no, we don't accept any weird projects. It has to be incredibly conventional and by the book. It's not a game unless I say it's a game. It has to have rules, winning and losing, and uh, dragons or space marines. It could have either one, <laughs> either elves or space marines. No, of course, I mean, that's our bread and butter. We, 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 love, we love nothing more than projects that test the boundaries of, of what anyone could imagine a game could be. Yep. Um, that's the place. Like, the whole point of having an academic program 
in games is to open up a space that is complementary to the industry. The industry itself is incredibly thriving, it's very creative, it does its own kind of innovation, um, but, but, but what we can do is open up a space that allows for and encourages a, a, a more exploratory, a more experimental approach. And so we really encourage people to, to make, to, to keep games weird, to make things that are, that, that, that run the risk of, of, of failure by, by being really challenging and interesting and different and unique. And we want people to be doing work that expresses their unique point of view and their, their eccentric personalities and, and everything else. So that's something that, that we encourage and we get a lot of and, and we support and we love it. I think it's a good idea to answer the, the, I mean, to answer the question about uh, ITP yeah. in particular. This program grew out of ITP, right? So ITP has been incredibly important uh, in, in the development of the kind of experimental game scene that exists in New York. Uh, but, you know, and, and I would also say that students in our program are encouraged to take classes in ITP. And vice and, versa. And vice versa. Yeah. So we share students b uh, back and forth. This is a program for people who have a particular interest uh, in games and want to focus on that. Yeah. And you'll definitely have uh, every opportunity to take, you know, uh, toy manufacturing classes or whatever it may be over at ITP as a way of kind of building out your electives um, if that's what you want to do. And, you know, ITP students come and take game classes here. And that's yeah. – the, the ethos of the two departments is very, uh, very closely related. I yeah. think that's I definitely mean, true. The big difference is that ITP has a more general approach. They're yep. interested in, in interactivity and, and media. And, and, uh, and we are more focused on games. We, yep. we feel like games are an established form of culture. Yep. Um, that doesn't mean that we police the borders of what is and isn't a game. It means that we are – uh, passionately committed to games as a shared project, um, and so that's what we focus on. Uh, any other questions here in the room? No. Jessica, question? No? <laughs> okay. Any other questions on the internet? Okay. All right. Well, thank you all very much for coming. Um, my email is frank.lance at nyu.edu, and I'm happy to answer any questions that occur to you later on. Uh, so I hope to see your applications in my inbox in a little bit. Absolutely. So thanks a lot for coming. Thank you. Thanks. Mic drop. That's it. Drop the mic. <laughs> we out. <laughs>